Hello, this is Joaquin Jimenez, and today I want to show you the new Ableton synthesizer, the Drift. This synthesizer is available in all versions of Live from 11.3. So what's the deal with Drift? We already have synthesizers and good ones. Why another one? Well, the Drift is made to create those imperfections that we have when using analog synthesizers. You may be thinking, okay, we already have an analog synthesizer and that's its name, analog, and it's also very good, but this one is special for creating sounds that have this drifting and hence the name. Drifting means having sound waves that are kind of similar, playing exactly at the same time, but thanks to this, we create thicker sounds. You can create layered sounds without actually layering instruments. Let's see. So I'm gonna describe the architecture of this synthesizer. First, we have an oscillator section. We will go into details of this section in a minute. Then the signal that the oscillators are generating goes to a filter module. Then the amplitude of these waveforms is controlled in the envelope section. And by the way, there is an LFO that can control different sections of the synthesizer, like the amount of shaping in the first oscillator, the pitch, the filter, and the LFO itself. Also, there are other sources of modulation, and I will show you. In the final part of the synthesizer, we have the section where the magic happens, and it's where the drift parameter is. Let me start by showing you, with only one oscillator, what the drift area is doing. We have different modes of drifting, of making these waves imperfect, and I will start by playing a sawtooth waveform. So far, it's just a normal sawtooth, but if I play two notes like this, I'm playing C1 and C2, and if I start increasing the level of drift, you will see some variation. The waveforms are dynamic now. That means these two voices are drifting they are not playing perfectly in sync. If I reduce the drift, we will hear this. And you will see that it's static. That makes the poly mode perfect for chords that sound thick. So the sound that I am creating sounds like a piano. I want to use it and I think it sounds good, but with the drift, we get a fuller sound. I'm gonna use a new channel to show you the mono mode of the drift. Mono mode allows you to play only one note at the time, but if you increase the level of mono, you are increasing the volume of the three voices that are playing at the same time. And if I increase the drift, I will get a very fat note. I think I'm gonna use this drift for a bass sequence. I will add another copy 
of the drift because I want to create a kick. For this, I want to use the mono mode because it will layer the same notes three times. And of course, with drifting voices. I will use a um, sine wave that sounds like this. I will draw an envelope for my kick drum, like this. I will also use the second envelope because I want it to control the pitch. If I set envelope 2 in the pitch modulation section, I can use the second envelope to modulate the pitch of whatever I'm generating here. And you can see that I am using now the second oscillator and even the noise generator. And here's where the drift gets interesting. I will add copies of this signal I will increase the drift and you can hear the fatness. What is also interesting about this is that maybe you can hear it. Every kick is different. And if I record it, You will see that each kick is different that adds more interest to my production. Maybe you have noticed that every kick has a different amplitude or at least different perceived loudness. To fix this, you can either reduce the level of mono, reduce the drift, but that's not what you want. You want to have these characteristics. And for this, I'm going to use another feature of the drift that I find very cool, which is you can saturate, you can create drive by pushing the level and at the same time generating harmonics. So I think this makes it warmer and at the same time I'm controlling the level of it. So this is what we have so far. With a little bit of side chain between the kick and the bass, we get a better sound. Now I want to explore the stereo and unison modes of the drift with this melody. I'm gonna high pass it a little bit, which is also another interesting feature of the drift. It has a low pass and a high pass filter at the same time. By the way, this filter has two modes, 24 dB and 12 dB roll off. Okay, this is the stereo mode and if I increase the stereo level, I can hear the spread of the signal. But if I set it to drift, you can hear how it's different on each side. I will add some noise. And I will explore the unison at the same time. Unison creates voices that are slightly detuned 
so they sound different. And we get this effect. I think I like it better for this melody. I will show you now some modulation options. We have seen that we can control the pitch. For example, if I play a note like this, I can set the LFO to control the pitch of it, creating frequency modulation. The only problem with this one is that the LFO is not running at a frequency that it's, it's a um, multiple of the note I'm playing, so it's creating a weird pitch. It's not actually a pitch, it's just a sound. But if I go to the mode one-to-one, -one, now I'm creating FM modulation because the LFO is oscillating at the same frequency as the note I'm playing. And I can set the LFO to vibrate at multiples of this frequency, keeping the harmonic relationship between the LFO and the note I'm playing. It can go as high as 16 or as low as 0.25. Another option to control the LFO is setting the time in seconds and milliseconds. For sound design, this is super interesting. And we can also generate oscillations in beat divisions. This is how we can generate rhythmic sounds. Remember, I'm controlling the frequency of oscillators, but I can use it to control the frequency, the cutoff frequency of my filter. So this is one modulation source. There are others, for example, the envelopes, as we have seen, and also there is a very cool one, which is the envelope two which we can use, for example, in our filter again. I, I'm gonna use it in our filter. But the cool thing about the second envelope is that you can set it to loop. And this makes the second envelope to behave like a, an additional oscillator. And we can control it with these parameters, creating weird or interesting waveforms. And for time, we have the same options as the LFO. We can use it to create rhythmic sounds as well. If you don't know what I mean by rhythmic sounds, I mean this. Sounds that are in sync with the metronome. Also, it's super interesting to control more than one thing with oscillators set to different frequencies. If you like to experiment, this is for you. So I have created this sound and maybe this is what was missing from my 
production with Drift. So these are the possibilities with Drift. What we have seen is that we have three different oscillators which are different, each oscillator is different, and its frequency can be modulated. We also have a filter that can be modulated, but regarding modulation, that is not all. In the modulation tab, we have a full modulation matrix. It doesn't look like a matrix, but it is. Believe me, you have sources of modulation like key, uh, velocity, mode wheel, and some MPE parameters that we can send to other parts of the synthesizer, like the gain of the oscillators, filter parameters, etc. And we have three of these. So we have a lot of modulation options. Again, let's recap. We have seen that Drift has three oscillators, every oscillator is different. Then we have a filter, we have envelopes, LFO, a lot of modulation options, and the drift module that creates the magic. And it's what makes it different from the other synthesizers in Ableton Live. I hope you enjoy this and you start creating with the drift. Thank you and see you next time.